Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. I'm Meyer Stahl, the pastor of the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Welcome to our program, What is Truth? Now, we have two radio stations that we've just taken on. I want to welcome my friends, my new friends in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Tucson, Arizona. Please welcome to the program. And uh, before we get started, I want to offer you two brand new booklets. The first is, What Kind of Faith is Required for Salvation? And at the bottom of the booklet, it says, do you know millions who actually believe in Jesus Christ have no salvation at all because they trust in the wrong kind of faith? And the second booklet is the companion booklet, What Do You Mean Salvation? And at the bottom of that booklet, It says, do you realize not one in a hundred knows what it is, how to get it when you receive it? Don't be too sure you do. Here, once and for all, is the truth made so plain you will really understand it. Now, what subject could be more important than your salvation? What you're going to be doing for all eternity, nothing, nothing could be more important to you. So why don't you order these two booklets? They're absolutely free. We never ask the public for money. Our phone number is 575 650 Three five nine. Now, if you don't have a pen and paper handy, please get uh, please get it so you can write it down later. We'll announce it later on in the program. Now we're going to get started. I'm going to uh, since we're new on these two radio stations, I'm going to give a short biography of myself. I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I came from a nominal Jewish background. And at age 35, I started studying the Bible. I've been studying the Bible now for over 50 years. I just gave it away. Uh, I am 85, and I have a motto. I'm 85 and still alive. (laughs) So uh, we have a unique program here. Uh, I just want to mention to you, we do not interpret the word of God. Second Peter chapter one, verse 20 says, the Bible is not for private interpretation. Now, when it is literal, we back it up with other scriptures. And when, they, when we read analogies, the analogies are explained by other analogies. And when uh, it's figuratively, we point it out figurative. And uh, we, you can uh, watch us, if you like, you can watch us on YouTube you can watch over 500 programs. Uh, all you need to do is type in what is truth Meyer Stahl or what is truth with Meyer Stahl 
and they're all different programs, they're all different titles, and pick the ones that you like, different topics. They're all related to the Word of God. Now, I want to explain our commissions. We have three commissions. The first commission is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, we'll look at verse 14. Matthew chapter 24 in verse 14. And here it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, what is the gospel of the kingdom? Well, gospel means good news. Now, the kingdom, any kingdom must have three parts. Would you agree with me that a kingdom has to have a king ruling over this kingdom? Certainly. Would you also agree with me that the second part is it must have subjects. A kingdom rules over subjects. Would you agree with me there? Now, the third part, I always hesitate. I give people a chance to come up with the third part of what a kingdom is. I'll give you a little hint. A kingdom is a form of government. What form of government has the third part? All forms of government have this third part. It's laws. The king rules by laws. Okay? So we're going to look at the laws of the kingdom and we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 9. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. That sounds familiar. This is given around Christmas time. But let's look at it very carefully. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, we'll stop there. Jesus Christ is king of king, king of kings. And he's going to rule all the people on this planet. And the, uh, the kingdom is going to include uh, all, of the, all of the planet itself. So it's going to include all of it. Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, and we'll look in verse 2. Isaiah chapter 2, in verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. This is symbolism that's going to be explained and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come you, 
and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Now this word law is the word Torah, and we find the Torah in the first five books of Moses. It's the laws of Moses. And the word of the Lord, this is Jesus Christ, from Jerusalem. He's going to rule from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We're going to stop there. How long is this kingdom going to last? It's going to last forever, but it's going to have a starting point. And it's going to, uh, we're looking at Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. So let's look at Ver Revelation 5, verse 10. And it says here, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So Christians are going to reign with Jesus Christ on this earth. We'll, we'll see that in Revelation uh, chapter 20. We'll start in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, this is a millennium. It's a thousand years long. And we're going to see it in more verses. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years, that's the millennium, should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, people ask, we'll stop there for a moment. People ask, why would you loose Satan once you got him locked up? Well, God's not done with him. <clears throat> God's going to use him one more time, and we'll explain that later on. So let's go back to verse 4, the important verse, the key verse here. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, let's, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark in their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, most people, most ministers, pastors, elders, teachers will not talk about the millennium because we're stopping there because they, it raises too much questions and questions that they can't seem to answer. But it's going to start out with a thousand years. Now, why a thousand years? Well, there's 6,000 years of history where God has let man select his own uh, kingdoms, his own religions, his own leadership. We got ourselves into a big mess today. And it's going to take Jesus Christ is going to rule for a thousand years and show how it should be done. So it's a contrast between man's ways and God's ways. Now, we'll go back to the Bible. 
Matthew chapter 28. In verse 14. Our second commission. This is our second commission here. That we're reading now. And it says in verse 18. We're reading it in verse 18. It says. And Jesus came and spoke unto them saying. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. This word is aeon, it's the word age, to the end of the age, amen. So our second commission is to go and teach all nations, and that's what we're doing now. We're teaching people. We started with two new programs in uh, both in Tucson, Arizona and Albuquerque, New Mexico. By the way, you you folks out there in uh, Tucson and in Albuquerque, you could catch us live on YouTube. Just all you need to do is type in what is truth with Meyer Stahl and you can watch over 500 topics. And uh, you could watch us also if, you, uh, if you're ever in uh, Las Cruces, you could come visit with us. We have services on Saturday at one o'clock at 240 Three Crosses Avenue in Las Cruces. All you need to do is call us first at area code 575-650-7359 and we'll give you directions and you could join us for an interactive Bible study in Las Cruces. You could also watch us on Facebook and... uh, and Las Cruces Channel, 10.30 every Saturday morning and every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. on Las Cruces Channel and watch us on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, we have a third commission that we have. And the third commission we find in Matthew chapter 24. So we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 24 and look at the third commission. And we find that, we find that in Matthew 24 verse 21. And it says here, for then shall be great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, some people are preaching seven years of tribulation. The Bible only says three and one half years. But, Verse 22 is an important verse. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, that's the elect is the ones that are called, they're chosen, they've been, they've repented, they've been baptized, and they've received God's Holy Spirit. Those days shall be shortened. So 
except for those days. The, be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I've read that twice for emphasis, so we would understand it. Okay, we're going to go now to, back to the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which have fallen asleep, that you sorrow not, they're dead, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, if I stop here, you're going to say, well, Jesus is going to bring the saints with him from heaven. That's not the case. Let's read the next couple verses and we'll understand it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain, we're alive and remaining unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent. This is an old English word meaning precede. Precede them which are asleep. The dead are coming up first. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice that. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're comforting one another with these words. Now, the companion scripture to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's take a look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, he's going to solve the mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to be dead. But we shall all be changed. Changed from what? To what? From physical to spiritual. Let's read it. In a moment, in the twinkling or the blinking of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. We're going to be changed from physical to spirit. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. We're going to be immortal. Wow, this is good news. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Okay, we're stopping there. Folks, I, I want you to send away for these two very important booklets what kind of faith is required for salvation and what do you mean salvation? There's no more important questions here than your salvation. Your salvation has to be the most important thing in your life.
So all you need to do is call us at area code 575-650-7359 and we'll be happy to send them to you free of charge. We never ask the public for money. Now, our job is to warn the world, so we're, we're looking. Uh, our job is to warn the world about the soon coming tribulation. It is coming soon, folks. Uh, things are getting worse and worse on this planet. And if you can't see it, you're probably blinded. And in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus tells us four times, four times, do not be deceived. Now, why does he say that? Because we must allow ourselves to be deceived. The way we become deceived is we allow deception to deceive us the same way that Eve was deceived in the Garden of Eden and the same way people are deceived today. So uh, I want to thank, we have, uh, uh, if you would like to email me, you could email me at meyerstall at gmail.com. I'd be happy to answer your emails. If you have any questions, please call me at area code Five seven five six five zero seven three five nine. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.